I was up late one night, enjoying the finer things in life, when I found myself in a Discord chat with the man, the myth, the legend, Modsville USA. We eventually got to the topic of OG Xbox debug and development kits. More specifically, how helpful they can be when developing on the platform. I've played around in the past with some basic debugging on a retail console. Using Xbox Watson makes it easy to live debug programs that you have source code for. This is helpful for finding issues in things like homebrew games and applications. There are limitations, however, on what you can see with this method. There are only a few differences between a debug and a retail Xbox. The big three are just an extra 64 megabytes of RAM, a BIOS that supports debug connection, and the appropriate XDK files on your hard drive. I've not been lucky enough to come across one for sale at a time when I could purchase it, so I did the next best thing. I added an extra 64 megabytes of RAM to my retail 1.0 console, threw it in a Halo themed case, barely tell the difference. It's been fun to play with so far, but after the discussion that night, I decided I definitely wanted to go deeper. That's what she said! <laughs> Looking any deeper than what I already have access to will require kernel level debugging. To do that, a Super IO is needed. The Super IO is a device that connects to the Xbox LPC debug port, the same port as a typical mod chip. I've wanted a development kit for quite a few years now, but just like debug kits, any time I've been ready to buy, there haven't been any available for a reasonable price. Unfortunately, a dev or a debug kit for a 20-year-old console is not something you can just find for sale on Google or eBay most days. The times you do see them, there's still a 50-50 chance the price is way too high or they're in rough shape. With some direction from friends, I found the open source variant of Super.io by Mike Davis on GitHub. Having the soldering skills of a sugar-fueled nine-year-old, I knew I needed Modsville's help. He took a quick look at the specs and gave the only response that a legend gives. Hey yo, I'm so rich, my homie solder super IO. It's for me. I got you, homie. So I ran to the store for some more of that sweet nectar of the gods, popped open the Googles, and learned myself how to order a PCB and a complete BOM for the first time ever. So after a few weeks of anticipation, my Super IO chip has finally arrived. But you'll notice that the Super IO chip uses a full LPC pin header. Now, your average mod chip is going to typically only use a 12 pin socket, and they'll only provide a pin header accordingly. Even your more advanced chips will typically either block some port or provide a pin header that's missing additional pins. So you gotta make sure that if you want to debug using a Super IO, that you have a completely populated LPC port. Now, this is a revision 1.0 Xbox running Servios 2.2.1 flash to the onboard TSOP. So I don't need a mod chip for this in order to be able to debug. All I need to do is take the appropriate 16 pin ribbon cable and hook it up to the LPC port and I'll be good to go. Now this will work for all 1.0 to 1.4 consoles. If you're on a revision 1.6 or 1.6B then you're going to need something like this where you're going to split your LPC port out in order to be able to install both a mod chip Oops, if you line the pin up correctly as well as your ribbon cable so, there's a little extra step for the 1.6s, but it's still manageable. So I threw this LPC breakout together real quick, just so that I could easily connect a Super IO or a Logic Analyzer to any Xbox I needed to. It's nothing fancy, 
but I do have the files for it. Let me know in the comments if there's any interest from anyone who wants to build one themselves, and I can clean it up and upload it to GitHub. Let's get this thing debugging, shall we? We're gonna take our connector. You'll notice both ends of our connector have a mark to let us know the index. So I'm gonna put that marker pointing towards the power source. And we want our super IO chip, once we have it plugged in, to be set in an orientation like so, kind of pointed towards the power source. So we're gonna look at our connector, plug our super IO in accordingly. Now I've made a couple of modifications to this case in order to fit the super IO out the back once the DVD drive is in place. On top of notching the case and the shielding here, I also had to slightly modify the shielding top so that the ribbon cable can make it through the case when it's all closed up without anything getting pinched. Oops. So, if you do go this route, you definitely want to make sure that your cable can sit down in some kind of notch where once your box is all tight giggity 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 goo it doesn't have anything that's dragging on it first advantage of debugging using a super io versus xbox watson is the fact that you don't need to set up a vm or anything you just download a compatible version of WinDVG. I'm using 5.1. Tell it to connect to a kernel using the appropriate parameters. Once we hit enter, we're going to see it attempt to connect to the Xbox through the blip on our receive light here. Once we kick the Xbox on, we're going to see that transmit and that receive go off, as well as we're going to get the output from our kernel here in our debugger. You'll notice that the output here is gonna look very similar to what we see in Xbox Watson. It's gonna be almost identical. The biggest difference between this output and that output is once we experience our crash, we can step around in memory here, get a better idea of what was going on. So I've loaded up a known corrupt skin for a next gen dash, which will cause it to crash once I boot. It's going to try to access something at memory address zero, which is illegal. Should see an error pretty soon here. There it is. I'm still relatively new to this, but this is going to be our disassembly at the exact memory address that our error occurred. So we can see here that our program plus this offset where it occurred, function, as well as step around in memory, get a better idea of what the kernel was doing at the time of the crash. So, I'm just starting to kind of learn assembly and, and get into the whole reverse engineering aspect of this, but let me know if you guys want to see some more about this. And as I learn, I can definitely let you know what I find. Until next time, take care.